Good afternoon. Welcome to the March 21st, 2022 version of the Police Building Committee, Police Station Building Committee. I see we have an agenda. I mean, we have a we have a quorum, so this meeting is called to order. And first on the agenda is the minutes from February 14, 2022. Any discussion, comments, questions? Make a motion we accept the minutes. Second. We have motion and a second to approve the minutes of February 14, 2022. All those in favor signif signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So voted unanimous, unanimously. Next, we have some bills to pay, as usual. We have a total of $911,991.48 in the following order. Fontaine Brothers, $813,467. Allied Testing, 235 Allied Testing again for $470. Construction Monitoring Services, $50,000. Construction Monitoring Services, $4,536.48. And Tecton Architects, 43283 Any questions? Okay, we're good with those? Yep. We have a motion? Second. Oh, he wanted, a, he, he wanted a motion. Do we have a motion? Oh, yeah, I'll give you one. Okay, okay we, we have a motion <laughs> and a second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the um, just described bills and warrants. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> so voted. And we're on to item four. Here from Neil, our owner's project manager. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in your information package that was circulated before the meeting, you should have had a budget update from us. Um, so the total expenditures to date, um, just over 9.7 million, which represents a little over 26% of the overall budget. I would say at this point in the job, being out of the ground, things are going very well. Um, we're very happy. There's been a, a big increase in activity uh, with the change in the weather as well as um, the overall process of the job. Um, we've seen the start of uh, slabs, both elevated slabs and slabs on grade, as well as roofing, wall sheathing, um, and we're getting ready to gear up for the insulation and the masonry work. So I will um, turn it over to you, Pat. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to take them. So are we, we're, we're right on schedule then? I think we did pretty well coming out of this coming out of the winter okay. um, last month has been a little tough not having the slabs in place okay but um, from all intents and purposes I think we're where we need to be moving forward any, any other questions Mo um, do you know when the rest of the exterior of the building will be enclosed this evening so the rest, Roughly. the rest of the the second floor was waiting on the slab on deck to be poured. So that was poured last Monday. Right. And from that date, we give it seven days to cure, and that's when the third party testing agent does their initial breaks. Those all came back good today. Um. So they started shooting bottom track to the floor, and they'll be bringing that up. I expect it within by the end of next week to be fully enclosed. No, I meant on the first floor. It's not finished. Yeah, so what the last sections there, they run full sheets up, so they do the last section. That last piece spans across the beam, oh. and the large openings in the front are curtain walls, so yeah. those curtain walls go from, on either side of the entrance, they go from the, oh. from the floor, from the foundation, stem wall, all the way up to that uh, steel you see, you see there, so there really isn't any more framing to do. So now that we're getting slabs placed on there, we'll put in temporary enclosures so we can complete our rough in um, before the curtain walls get set. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? I do have one. I just I, I keep looking at the when I look at the budget, I keep looking at the five million dollars we have for the exterior communications. I may be getting ahead of myself, but I'm just curious as to where we are with that. I could provide an update on that. Sure, that'd be great, Kristen. Sure. So um, the Centec Tower has been installed and inspected, and that's all set. Uh, the other items are um, here at the, the laydown area, so we're on budget and on track when we're ready to install the new system at this, the police department to do so. We've expended um, the majority of the contract documentation. So have we we've received bids on it? and Motorola was the, was the bidder. Okay. And we're all... We're under contract with them. We have been for quite some time, 
and we, they're well underway with their work, almost complete with their work. Okay, but they don't submit any bills to the till the end, or they don't submit any bills to the building committee. It, it goes to our office. It does. Okay, so how does that reflect then in the budget? Alex, do you have any idea where we are with the Motorola payments? Um, okay, we'll take a minute and we'll get that to you. Okay. No, I, I I think I think it's important if we can see that in the budget update as we go. Sure. I was going to say if meeting. you want to share it with us, we can present it as part of so our can budget for moving forward. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Great. Thank you. Eight thousand dollars left to be built. Eight thousand dollars left. Yep. So we spent four point nine eight. Yeah. Four point nine eight. Yep. So where's all the equipment? Are it's installed at Syntec, the other locations, and then it's waiting to be installed at the police station. So do we we have it here. Mm -hmm. The equipment too, not just the tower. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it'd be helpful if we just see that in the budget. We can also sure. have. A so who's installing it? Motorola, it's a contractor. Okay. All right. When this not none of it's part of this contract, right? The that only thing correct. we do is provide conduit to get the. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Very good. All right. Thanks, Neil. Yep. All right. That brings us to Matt <clears throat> from Tecton Architects. How you doing, Matt? Doing good. How about yourself? Good. Thank you. Happy first day of spring. <laughs> Um, it, ironically, about a year ago, uh, a few of us were standing out front here um, on a March day that was supposed to be really warm, and it was like 12 degrees out, picking out brick samples. Um, one year after that, the, the brick is about to start going on the building, so that's pretty, pretty nice to see. Um, and it's a lot warmer today. Uh, I'll just run through some photos. Uh, these are all current as of today. Um, this is looking from the uh, construction entrance towards the, towards the front of the building um, on, the, on the ground floor, as, as Mo, you had pointed out. Uh, this is essentially the last remaining section of the building to be sheathed on the ground floor. Um, so as they start finishing up the, uh, the upper level and sheathing that, um, like Ryan said, they'll, they'll start filling in those, those last pieces. But those, those big openings are where the, the, the larger windows are gonna be going in. Uh, you also note that um, the roof is starting to go on, so the, uh, the underlayment has, is being installed. You can see it there, that, that white sheet. Um, and then there's that small um, parapet that sits beyond that. That's, that's basically the, uh, the coping edge of the top of the roof, so the, the various layers of the roof will build up to that, that parapet edge and get flashed in. Um, this is the rear of the building, so this is what the front is gonna start looking like. So this is the officer's entrance um, on the other side. You can see here that the sheathing has been completed. The windows and doors are being wrapped with the air vapor barrier, um, and it's getting ready for the um, masonry ties and then the closed cell uh, installation that'll go on there. Once that's complete, uh, the brick will start being installed. This is the rear of the building. Um, so this is looking at the fitness area. Um, again, work is, work is continuing to pro progress around here. Um, there's a lot more happening just beyond that photo on the interior, and we'll share that shortly. Uh, and this is the back of the sally port. Um, if you squint real hard, you can see the masonry ties uh, in there. You can see them just in the top left corner against the blue sky. But um, pretty much all the brick ties, the, the first part of those have been installed. And those, um, those act, actually act partially as a guide for the insulator so that they know how deep to spray to. So they'll go right up to the edge of those. Uh, and then the mason will come back, connect the second half of those masonry ties, and then the brick will follow right after that. Moving to the interior. So this is from the main entrance looking towards dispatch. Um, not too much has changed since the last time uh, we spoke in here in particular, but um, a lot of the underground work has been ongoing. Temp lighting has been, been going on in. Um, off to the right and to the left, you'll see a little bit of block work that wasn't done last month. So the, the uh, elevator shaft, they're just finishing. There's a few courses left for them to complete, um, but for the most part, they, they completed that work. Uh, and then on the left is the, uh, the stair tower two. Uh, all that masonry was, was installed over the past week or so. Next image. Just a couple of quick images here just to show. Um, this, is, this is the area of the, of the restrooms. A um, little bit of the rework that had to go on there at, um, as a result of the the uh, restroom changes so just just an image to show that they had to a lot of this work was completed last fall so there was a little bit of rework uh, associated with that and then this is the other restroom uh, off the lobby as well <coughs> um, 
that image outside of the fitness room, this is, this is looking on the inside of that. So these are the layers that go down just before the slabs on grade get poured. Um, so that, that yellow tarp material, that's the, uh, the uh, vapor retarder that goes down before the slab. And then uh, rebar is installed on top of that, which uh, again, uh, if you squint real hard, you'll be able to see it in, the, in these images. Uh, but seams are taped, penetrations are sealed, and that's basically ready for um, concrete to go down. Uh, and then after that uh, stage, this is when the concrete goes down. So this is the, the garage area. This, uh, this was poured this morning. So this was poured this morning. You can see him just finishing up the concrete there. And um, as we left to walk over for this meeting, um, they were doing all their uh, cuts in the slab, all their, all their joints. So um, that slab will be ready uh, in just a few days for them to start doing uh, most of their work on. So big progress there. Uh, and similarly, this is the, the other garage. This is the Sally Port Bay. Um, same thing. Drains have been set, and they're just, they're just doing their, their finished work on the slab as well. So those are both shaping up really nicely. Moving upstairs, this is where the slab on deck was poured um, on Monday. Uh, I'm sorry, last week. Um, like Ryan had said, the seven-day breaks were coming back. 75% um, of their design strength are above. They, they need... 28 days uh, to reach full cure, so 75% um, is what we want to see before they can start working on it um, within seven days. So they can start um, tomorrow laying track, or they started at the perimeter today, and, uh, and can start building all the, the interior partitions. And um, MEP uh, rough-in is, is ongoing up here as well. <clears throat> um, this, this view is looking um, essentially from the, the admin suite towards um, <clears throat> towards the detectives, you can see the, the cupola windows uh, in the background. Um, <clears throat> and this is a little bit further down in the space. This is around where the mechanical room uh, is going to be, looking out onto the roof deck. And on the roof deck, there's quite a bit of um, material being brought up there and, and, and ready. Uh, a lot of that wood blocking that you see there, those are the, those are the, base, the bases for uh, a lot of the rooftop mechanical equipment, so fans. Um, and, and the air handling units will be going uh, on, on that block in there. And then most of the material that you see off in the distance is uh, most of the roofing material, insulation, um, the, the finished roofing product, things like that. So one of the, one of the, one of the pieces of, uh, of, of the project that is, uh, is of concern for lead times on a lot of building projects right now is the roofing material. And so seeing it here on the project site is, is, a, is a really big deal. Um, and this is from the other end of the roof looking back. You can see the roofers up there um, doing the underlayment and uh, ice and water shield on the sloped roofs. That's the last little piece of that. Um, from there, they'll start building up their insulation. There's a, um, a vented sheathing block that goes on top of that with a little more insulation. And then the finished roofing product will go on after that. So the shingles will go on. So it's shaping up to uh, be in really good shape. Uh, and then uh, in the middle there, you can see the little bit of roof sheathing where that <coughs> in the middle of the shot where the ladder is so that's there's a there's a little tucked in piece of flat roof up above there where some other mechanical equipment goes so they're just finishing the inside of those parapet walls and in, in, in that roofing area as well um, just wanted to give a quick update on the 9-11 memorial that the um, high school students are working on so uh, they have spent a few months working on some different ideas and concepts and are starting to build uh, the memorial. So we took their drawings and put together a, a rendering of what that's gonna look like. Um, and this is essentially what it's gonna look like, uh, the base of it. Uh, so this is the, uh, if you're facing the building, off to the left, there's a, there's a planter that's uh, just off to the left of the entrance. And uh, we're gonna have a, a little spot carved out for the, uh, the memorial itself. So th they're fabricating this out of steel. And then in between those two piers that come up on, uh, on either side will be the, uh, the piece of steel from the, the World Trade Center. We'll, we'll nestle between those two pieces. So we just wanted to give the, the committee an idea of what this is going to start looking like. Um, uh, and that is all I have today. Um, any questions? Thanks, Thanks, Matt. Questions? No. Thanks. That was Nice thorough update. I appreciate it. Okay, that brings us to Ryan, the structure manager from Fontaine Brothers. How are you, Ryan? Doing well. Um, 
So as both Matt and Neil noted, um, progress has really started picking up on site as the weather's been turning for us. Uh, with the slab on grade pours today, we have 17 of the just about 40,000 square feet of uh, concrete uh, floors to pour. Um, we have had another uh, pour scheduled for Friday. We're moving that to Monday due to the weather at the end of this week, but uh, I hope to have the all of the slabs poured out by the first full week of April. So we probably have three more slab on grade pours to get that. Um, we have the roof going on, as Matt noted, by the end of this week, I expect the whole second story area to be watertight, as well as the fitness room in the garage. Um, as we move material around and get it down on the roof, we'll get the rest of that big portion of the roof uh, watertight. Um, that's a real big thing for us, just with any uh, line duct or getting your mechanical or uh, electrical rough in, you need a watertight space. So that's one of the keys for us, is to get that insulation and uh, EPDM roofing um, down. Um, and as Matt noted, that was something that we worked real closely with Stanley Roofing on to make sure we got that material here in a timely fashion. So uh, that's all big pieces coming together. Um, as Matt noted, all the roof curbs for the MEP or for the uh, HVAC um, units were set last week. We have all of those air handling units are sitting in the uh, yard for the HVAC subcontractors rigor, which is great because just like a lot of things in this world right now, it's hard to get HVAC units. So all that stuff is ready to get set on the roof as soon as the roof is complete. Um, as previously noted, now that we've uh, got the slab on deck poured, we'll be enclosing the second floor and getting temporary uh, windows in the openings so that we have a watertight space that the MEP rough can get going. Um, but we have a lot more trades coming onto site. Um, as Matt noted, also the brick veneer ties are going up. We have AVB ongoing, and that's going to start at the um, east side of the Sally Port and work its way counterclockwise around the CMU section. So we're going to go around the Sally Port fitness area, then the garages, and work our way to the two-story in front on Maple Ave with the brick veneer. Um, so we have the veneer uh, brick showing up shortly as well as the precast. So all of that is going to get going here in the next week or so, and we'll keep moving around the site. Um, we have all of our, uh, we're tracking all of our uh, metal windows to be uh, delivered the end of next month or early May, um, which all works out well with our schedule. So it's uh, kind of just coming out of the winter now and, and picking up speed as we get the building uh, watertight and get all the roughing completed. So lots going on. Good. Thanks, Ryan. Questions? No? Again? Thank you very much. All right, that brings us to item five, review and act on the layout and design of second exit drive. Matt, I believe that's you. Yep. Those sides. So uh, last time we met, um, we presented this layout <clears throat> for the second exit drive out of the police station as well as um, some additional parking area um, for the ball fields. Again, trying to maximize as much green space as possible um, while also providing that second drive in, in parking. Um, but what we were asked uh, at the last meeting to, to do was investigate some other fencing ideas. We had, we had basically shown a four-foot chain link fence at the south side of the parking area here to give a little bit of protection from errant soccer balls to vehicles and things like that and just to give a little bit of separation between the vehicles and, and the ball fields. Um, and it was asked that we look at a couple of different options and put some renderings together and what that might look like. So we have that today and they were included in the uh, committee update on Friday as well for a preview. So the first option just is, is as we had designed it. So you'll see just off to the right of the parking lot is the, uh, the four foot high chain link fence and, and we're just showing that um, small um, earthen berm between the parking area and the, and the second drive um, as a, just to help separate those, those two pieces out. Um, just as a reminder, we do have a um, small gate um, and some signage that will have uh, do not enter signs and things like that. Um, at the second drive to make sure nobody's driving down. <coughs> um, next image. And this is a view. Um, this is a bird's eye view of what that what that might look like. Um, so keeping it fairly simple. 
Uh, uh, could you go back to that for a second with the birds of view? Yep. So where would where would I'm trying to get my bearings on where would home plate be located <laughs> on the softball field? Oh, uh, we. Uh, well, field's not available. No, it's yeah. Field's no, it's not. Field. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. okay. So it's just it's just soccer. Just mm -hmm. just soccer. Yeah, just soccer. I'm sorry. I got. Um, all right. Then I'm good. That gate is that an electric gate? No. What we had talked about was just just basically having a couple of bollards with a chain across from there. Yeah, we had we had. There is a gate. Further down, side, right. So we would do a gate, an actual gate, at the actual police parking lot. But we had what we had discussed previously was simply just having a chain or something like that across the actual drive entrance. And so, how did where would the would that be cumbersome, Chief? It wouldn't be because we're not going to be using it that. I know, but frequent. say say they needed to get out. Where would they have to go to get the key? Would everybody know where the key is? Yeah, we'd have a key on every ring. And oh, so on every cruiser? Yeah. Okay. We do that for several locations in town. Okay. Um, another option that we explored was just doing a um, same concept, but doing a, um, a wood guardrail. This would, this would just be a simple wood, wooden post guardrail. Um, Which is consistent with what's out there today. Correct. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. So that, that would match the, the other fencing that's around the site. Uh, and again, the view from above. Um, and option three, this is showing um, the same wood guardrail, but also adding that to either side of the police drive, because um, there was there was certainly some some concern about um, protecting that from somebody trying to drive along the grass and and park in there as well and block that. Um, and from above as well. And the fourth option, um, it was one, one op option that was discussed at the last committee meeting was doing a, a six foot high chain link fence on either side of the police drive. So this is, this is showing what, what that would look like. Um, again, with the wood guard rail at the, at the um, parking lot. Okay, Donna. So that berm, is that just grass? Yes. And it's easy to cut that way? Yeah, cause I think the the rendering probably shows it more severe than it than it is. Yeah, oh, I thought it looked nice that way. I just wondered how you'd cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Walk behind. <laughs> yeah. back there. <laughs> An old-fashioned lawnmower. So, any thoughts from the committee? What are we trying to accomplish? Because either one of these is just so cars do not go where. I'm looking at this and I'm looking at it expense-wise. Mm -hmm. What are we trying to accomplish here? <clears throat> is it safety? Somebody driving uh, onto the ball field? Or uh, I see this is very expensive. Either way, we're going to go here. It's expensive. So what are we accomplishing? Is it safety? What you, is it concern for safety? That's different. Yeah. But why are we spending... In order, in order, money, a lot of money, really, to accomplish what? I would, so I, I would take all this money and put it in the building for him. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money here. I don't care what you, uh, wood fence, guardrail, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of money being expended for this. So I don't the think, aesthetics. So I don't think that we have the budget for the parking lot or the guardrail for the field. I think that, that would be part of a park budget unless we come up with some savings. I think the budget that we're looking at is for the drive. Mm -hmm. um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it, right now we, char we charge Tecton and Fuss and O'Neill to look at this concept for us. They have not priced it out specifically yet. I think that's the next step, but the budget for the police station building would be that second exit only it would not be the parking lot and the and the guardrail that would have to come out of a different budget at a different time well, I'm, de I'm definitely in favor of an exit emergency <laughs> exit absolutely well um the guardrail the, the wooden guardrail um i think it's a safety issue the rest of the park is that way with the wooden guardrail so we're not paying for that no well no, but I mean, if we build it, we're going to, somebody's going to pay for it if we build it. It might not come out of this project. Um, and, the, and the idea with the, 
I, personally, I don't like the idea of the double fence. <laughs> I probably said I'd like the double fence in the back, but it doesn't make sense to me. There's no place to push the snow. But the idea was to not... I, I still can't tell if that berm makes sense or not because I can't tell how high it is or whatever. But anyways, um, it was just to make sure kids and stuff didn't run out into the other side for the for the few times a, a, a cruiser might be using it. It was just to keep keep people off of that police drive. That's what that fence was for. If the grass, the way it looks on that, it, the grass would probably work um, at seeing it now. Um, but yeah, it was it was a safety thing in my mind. Donna, I think absolutely a safety thing, and I think it prevents cars off hours or whatever driving onto the field, doing donuts and all the things that people do when they're not supposed to be on the field with their cars. Um, plus, it protects people, so it's absolutely safety. Um, I don't think you need the fence on the easterly side of the police drive, but I do like the idea of a fence on the westerly side of the police drive. And I, I can't comprehend what that, how high that berm is or what it's going to accomplish, but I do like the fence in both places. But not on the easterly side. I don't think you need that. Which, right? I, I don't know. He I doesn't know his my orientation west. right. West what? is the, near the berm. West is near the berm? Yeah. West is near the berm or the wood wood fence, where the no, grove east. of trees. That's, that's, that's from north and south. Yeah, that's north south. Page west. It's page west. Is the berm side. The right side. How about Correct. if I say that? So the wooden fence is towards Worcester, right? No, no? the wooden no. fence is toward Maple Ave. Yeah, that's. It is. Yeah. 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 Can you go back to the overhead, Matt? Yeah, it goes that way back to <laughs> Maple sorry. Ave. Because you're at the back of the park there. I can't do it. It just seems to me the berm, given our New England glacial till, it's going to be a hard thing to keep. We can barely keep our roads flat. And a berm and a fence is like almost a, a bit too much. And I think the berm thing is hard to mow, hard to maintain. I'm not sure I can get behind that one. Keith? It's like either fence or yeah. a thing. Like, I don't know about the from a main, I'd, I'd like Keith's, in, Keith's input from a maintenance standpoint on that. Cause sure. I so I, I, I think if, if the berm is built correctly, which I think that's kind of their plan and have it sloped right, we can do it with our mowers. Um, you know, our five foot wide mower should be fine on that. Um, from a maintenance perspective, I would, pref I guess my option would be option two, would, would be just the, um, just the wooden, the wood uh, guardrail. And no the, fence. Yeah, no, no fence on either side of the drive. Um, I, we just do what we do a lot of re fence repair and I just see us spending a lot mm -hmm. of time on that. Sure there and then the wooden guardrail itself I think it looks good in the park and it matches everything else that we have yeah. um, keeps people off the field so that's kind of my Joe take on so mr. chair for the purpose of this committee we're really only concerned with the emergency drive right. correct so the, the other our the, opinion the other the rest, but yeah no I, I understand that but the other piece would be something that would come down <coughs> to the road later on from PAX or, or if yeah if money was available for PAX another department, right mm -hmm. I would <coughs> It could come out of the police budget if there's money left over, right? When if I talk if to this Kevin, committee and the Parks and Cemetery Committee yeah. agree yeah. to that, yes. If if in the end we have money left over. Right. We have scads of money. Yeah. <laughs> it, um, well, how wide is the burn? Uh, it's 10 feet wide. Wow. And how high? Um, if we did it at, um, at, at, at 2 to 1, it'd be 2.5 feet high. If we did it at a 4 to 1, it would be 4 feet high. Four to one probably wouldn't work for us. No. Okay. But the two to one would. Which would be which would be enough to de deter a vehicle. It would sure. deter a vehicle. Um, which is the intent. All right. So. Of that. I always think worst case scenario. Um, with with that kind of a slope, to me, that's an attractive nuisance for kids, and they'll be up there rolling down the hill because they do it other places. So. At two feet. Flying saucer. Yeah. Little kids, go watch the soccer games. If there's a hill, they're on it. They, 
definitely do. Um, so from an aesthetic pers perspective, the slope probably looks better and the burn, whatever you want to call it. I still think from the safety perspective, and you know, obviously it, it might, this decision might not even be up to us. The road is, the rest of it's not. Um, I would still say put the fence, get rid of the berm. But that's my opinion. And you mean the wooden, I could be you mean the wooden fence? Put the fence the on the parking lot side and not on the back side. Yeah. And maybe even move it further to the up to the parking area. But whatever. Donna? So you want to, want option? I think the fence is a good idea. I don't care about the berm. I, I think the fence is a good idea. And I think the berm is up to people who have to mow it. <laughs> if you, you're going to use that extra dirt? Is that what you're trying to get rid of? That's, that's, so that's part of it, is, is it does give us a place to get rid of some of that dirt. We're not going to get rid of nearly all of it through that, but mm. <laughs> we've got about 3,000 yards of, of material that we have to find a home for. Chief, your thoughts? I like option three, but no berm. I don't think the berm's needed. Which, which one's three? That's right, the, the one that's one. up there. Yeah. Guide wheels on both sides. <coughs> Guide wheels on both sides? Yes. But there's no place to push the snow. There is with that kind of a fence. With that kind of a fence, you can. Mm. Really? Yep. Mr. Chair? Yes. So no. as far as the safety issue, I, I think we can't lose sight of the fact that this is just an emergency well, drive only. And it's only going to be used if there's severe weather. Um, there's a blockage down on Maple Ave where the police can't get out that way. Probably not. The fields aren't going to be used at that point. Um, there could be some other event that's going on, but at that point, the police or public safety are probably not going to have people on those fields anyway. So I think to try to, I understand the safety con concerns with kids and things like that, but that driveway shouldn't be used at that point. Thanks, um, Joe. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to put the guardrails and the berms and everything, it looks nice. Um, I, I don't really think there's there's a need for a big separation there between the between the parking lot and the driveway, but uh, that's my opinion. I, I, I agree with you. If, look, if we go back to the beginning of this, when we didn't have a driveway there and the concept was proposed, the purpose of it, as I recall, and I'm, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was for almost a catastrophic type of event. Chief, I would assume <clears throat> that when this is all done, whatever we decide to do, that there's going to be some sort of policy within the department that that road is not to be used except in a crisis event, whether it be a natural disaster, a, you know, a, a hundred year storm, somehow the front of the, we can't get access any other way to the building. But I, my understanding, it's only supposed to be used if there is no access to the front. So the way I see it, it's not going to be used. Maybe it's used once a year. Maybe it's not used for 10 years. So to me, I'm thinking, what are we doing here? We want to have the road there. You, I think the, the idea of having the berm up there, aesthetically, I happen to like it. It also helps out on the project in terms of removing some of the road, some of the dirt. And it also hides the road from the view of the field. And then if you just cons use consistently, use the, the railing that we have on the field the way the rest of Maple Ave is, I don't think we need any fencing over on that side. If there's a natural disaster, there aren't going to be kids out there. Yeah, a bigger problem than that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I can, Donna. Be, I can be convinced. I like the fence. I don't care about the berm. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I can look at you asking. I'll just, I'll just weigh in with my opinion. Sure. I prefer option two the best with. Can you go back to two again? Yeah just the berm so and not guardrail. Mm. Right, that's I think it's yeah. less offensive mm. to That's my preference. That's my easily my preference. Cars can't get in there. If kids are over there, there there aren't going to be any other vehicles over there anyway because it's not supposed to be used. And if there's a natural disaster, they're not going to be there anyway. Are you are you talking I, I'm fine. I don't 
Yeah. I'm fine with no, either. No, no, no. Honestly, I'm just, I, I'm, just, I'm just talking. I'm thinking out I'm, loud. I just said which one I thought I that, that if one. I had a choice was three, but two is fine. I you, you could even have. I hate to say nothing, but yeah. And two is and fine. bottom line, from a cost standpoint, that's probably the least expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just ask a? Sure. Just curious. Don't construction companies come in and want that dirt as fill? That they don't want that? No. So the the concern with that is so that's all topsoil in in the pre-construction. Uh, uh, Tecton's consultant Fuss and O'Neill came in and did samples of the dirt, and there were levels arsenic. of arsenic. Right. So we have you know we have to be careful with with what we do with that, and I think that's part of a conversation that needs to be had is how that material in a possibly a separate project with the <clears> parking <throat> area interface because you know we could grade that material out within the bounds of the fence line where your parking lot could go but to grade that out for a couple dollars here and then have to take it all out to have a subgrade that's appropriate for your uh, parking lot is two points land do we have on the west side whatever <laughs> say left or right <laughs> where the trees are over there against yeah. the, how far how far back do we run off of that driveway not very no yeah the That's driveway is tight close. Yep. It's very close you can't the, mount it up the north lot line i can live with number two though um i just had another thought about that about the berm also um we could use a lomo fescue grass or something different on that too yep. also it doesn't necessarily have to be um like lawn grass, mm -hmm. right? Something else. Yep. We could certainly probably get creative with. Yeah, that would what look we nice. plant there. Donna. So I watch too many TV shows. I know, but <laughs> I'm I'm just curious. Like the incident that happened in Lester, Chief. The car went into the station. Was there a berm there? Oh, uh, it just went through the front. <laughs> went through the front, front, front door. Front door. So would that berm stop? the vehicles that would want to drive through it again we're not going to be using it i'm not thinking oh, you mean over it? Not, i'm not thinking of you using it i'm thinking of somebody abusing the berm i'm trying to you know where the fence might stop them but will the berm stop someone from deciding with a few drinks in them or with violence on their mind to drive through the berm can they go through it or does the berm stop them I, I, it's hard to say with that rendering how. I know I can't. I have I mean, no idea what it's like. Two it's feet. Four tall. feet. That's four feet's pretty high. Four feet. Oh, pretty big, yeah. Two and a half feet. Thought it was two and a half. Two and a half feet is still above most bumpers. Yeah. yeah. Two and a half feet. Yeah, 30, 30, 30 inches would would be a vehicle to turn for most. As high as a table. High as high as table. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be only five feet out on each side. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty steep. Yeah. I'll test it with my truck, though. I think I can make it. But Justine, no, I, you know what? I, I'm I'm okay with that. I I sometimes I'm like way over cautious. I, I think the railing on the soccer field side definitely. The rest of it, as I see it now, I, um, I I I could live with number two. Go ahead, Justine. Thank you. Um, if if this is our focus of a, a big big decision, we this is not a really a, gigantic thing and we have a lot of this project ahead of us we may very likely run into a, some problems that we do need some money for and I'm not seeing this as a, taking the passion that we're putting on it right now um, and I'd like to kind of conserve that money for the stuff that it does come up that will come up that's big that can come up this, this would only happen with the police station money if the police station was done and we had money, this is just no, no. We're talking about the drive. Drive. Just the oh, drive. the drive yeah, itself. The, drive. the police drive. drive? Yeah. Were you talking? Are you talking just about the, the, the what? berm, the fence, the double fence? The the berm is going to save us money because we're going to be using yeah. the soil. Right. The fence will not. The fence along the drive will be an added cost, or the. The guardrail along the drive will and be. The fescue is cheap. But the berm will be a savings yeah. because we'll be able to move material and not have to truck it off site. Right. Well, I like that. Oh. You can mow it. So I, I just have a question. We're talking about how expensive it is. <coughs> I'm curious <coughs> how expensive <coughs> is one of those wooden fences going to be? Good question. 
So wooden fencing is sixty to seventy five dollars a, a per lineal foot to install. So if you looked at the fence that's up in this screen right now, that's about twenty five thousand dollars worth of wood fence. What about where the berm is? Um, per side, it's about twenty five thousand dollars. So it'll well. be about twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, per run per of it. Actually, Get, per fifty. Side. Yeah, so per side. So if you did both sides of the driveway, it'd be fifty thousand dollars. So if you did option three, it'd be closer to seventy five thousand. Right. So before we get out of hand, the in reality, it would only cost us twenty five thousand dollars to put the fence on the right side of that picture. Mm -hmm. Right. Twenty-five thousand dollars. We're talking about correct plus upkeep and maintenance of the fence, right? But what's the cost of the road? That's in addition to guardrails and everything else. I think we ran preliminary numbers last year when this first came up. You're talking about the road or the parking lot in the, the road? Just just the emergency road itself, excluding fencing or anything like that. I don't have like when we ran preliminary norm numbers last year which had this a softball field included, it was a rough order of magnitude of $150,000, but that included a softball field, so I don't have a breakout of that at this time. Um, could certainly ask for it. I think some of the key things are the, just making sure we're on the same page with the, what the material finish would be for the, the road, you know, asphalt versus crushed stone. I mean, that those are the couple items we'd want to make sure we have. Yeah, I was gonna say because it looks like on the rendition it's a crushed stone or the yeah in in the rendering the uh, drive is asphalt and then the parking lot is gravel. Okay. And we wanted to limit the amount of porous paving on here because we didn't want to have any we have we'd have some stormwater issues that we'd have right. to address. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask you one other question? On the tree side, left <laughs> side, um, is there an existing fence there now? There's nothing. No. There is an existing chain link fence with barbed wire on it that would come out with us. No, that's on the other side. That's on the that's on the guardrail side. Can we go back right. to the site plan. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> So, I wonder if I can escape out of this. Yeah. There's currently a. Yeah. Not, I didn't mean that fence. Is there one behind it? No. Mm -hmm. There's nothing separating our property? No. Well, or is that our property behind? Construction behind fence. Temporary now. construction what? The, fence. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. The, it, yeah, the, the fence that's out there right now along the back is along the property line. So. Oh, there was there was no fence there at all before? There was additional fencing there before you mass uh, demolished that building back okay. there. But the, the, the because this lot was kind of fenced in and then there was more back there, but that was all removed. So no. the only fence that remains is this one and then the temporary construction. The, the only question I had about, about number two is, um, it, I, I'm sure you can do it in design, put a mound on the side or something, but it looks like somebody could drive in from the other side. Could You can't get in on the side where the berm is, but you could drive in on the other side. So as long as you can put something up there to block the opening, Somehow, we could do two berms. What? We could do two, a second berm. What? Just at the beginning? Actually, could. Mm -hmm. And that would take care of more material. Mm-hmm. Put berms on either side. Well, I, I was thinking just on the, on the, on the front of it. You're talking right there, Mo. Right? No, I'm talking on the left side. On the left. <coughs> Trees. Between the You're gate right. and the berm. Mm -hmm. No. No, between no. the Be tree and the gate. The oh. Between the road and the trees. Somebody can drive right around back there. So what, I mean, it kind of it, defeats the purpose of it. The reality is the trees, those, those trees aren't, those, they're not really there. They're not really there. I, I understand that. <laughs> that makes it even worse. If there's nothing there on that side, somebody could just right. drive going on the left. Absolutely. So if we do something, could we do something to stop that? Even if you use, how many feet is there? Do you even have room to put a berm there? We, yeah, we can. You just have to shift a we can shift. We can shift the road south a couple of feet. You can just put something right. there so somebody can't. I mean, we go through an all of this, and then somebody goes, "Well, oh, we drive around it." But I, I'm, I, I'm okay with that with the trees without the trees. But 
I like the berm idea on either side. Right, you could lose the. Does, that does that Keith exists? like yeah. the berm idea yeah. on either side? What? Does Keith like the berm yeah. idea? Yeah, no, he likes the guy. Well, actually. you know, it, does, it accomplishes a lot, though. Yeah, and we can just get creative with what we put yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, for maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it, again, it, it long run will save us money. Right. We agree? I don't know. That's who we can we go back to the site plan one more time, Matt, please? Or Ryan, sorry. So we're talking about a berm in the top left. Could you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that okay, Keith? I assume you have enough material. Is that okay, know. Keith? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is not going to take care of our material problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is a drop in the bucket. Oh, I hope so. You saw that. You guys see the pile out there from the side of the road. That's what we're talking about. So do we save money on removal of dirt by leaving it there? Yes. For the amount that we retain on site, we would save money in what would become an added cost for disposal of that material. How many yards does it take in a berm? <laughs> How many yards? Depends how big it is. <laughs> not just not enough to bog us down. <laughs> I guess the first decision is which which option does everybody like? Two with the Whether, berm. Yeah. I mean, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. Two with the berm on the other side. John, yes? Yes, two. Chief? Two with the berm on the other side. Yep. Donna? Yeah, as long as Keith's happy with it, I. I'm <laughs> well, well, I think yes. I, I think also if I, if you let me work with them on berm berm and then the the vegetation we put on it. Do we need a berm subcommittee here? We might, <laughs> well, we might, might be able to make it. Might be able to actually make it a little bit larger if we can come up with something we don't sure. have to maintain as. Well, I, it seems but like the we concept have is that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, maintenance will cost you over the years. Sure. Just kidding. If you let the wild grasses grow on it, it won't be so bad. Everybody's good with that one. Arm. Yes. All right. So what, Kristen, what do we need to act on? So we would uh, make a motion to move forward with option two with the modification that we discussed related to the berm so that uh, Tecton and Fuss and O'Neill can move forward with the cost estimating needed to move forward and with the permit, move forward with the permitting and cost estimating uh, for the second drive. Is that a motion? Yes. So move. All right. Second. <laughs> and we have a second. So we have a motion and a second to move forward on the exit drive design option two with the addition of the berm on the other side. So it's really design option. Subject oh. uh, Pat, working, I mean, uh, keep working. The concept, we, we bought the concept. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? So voted unanimously. Kristen. What permitting? So um, they will have to go back to the planning board for a site plan modification. And I'm not sure if we're in the buffer zone to concom with this design. We'd have to. Uh, we, will, we will notify uh, them to see if they would like us to be there. Because we're right on the edge. Excellent. Whew. All right, that brings <laughs> us to <laughs> item six, other business. Anybody have anything? Kristen. Um, so I know Chairman Pitney, um, Mr. Mizikar has made you aware of this, but he had asked me to bring this up under uh, new business sure. this afternoon. Um, that tomorrow evening, the Board of Selectmen has an item on their agenda to revise the charge of the Police Station Building Committee to include uh, review of the town hall feasibility for uh, rip, um, revisions, enhancements, or expansion of the town hall. We had started as a committee reviewing um, the police station, the town hall, and the senior center, and then due to budget constraints, we cut that back. Um, the town manager has identified a source of funding to continue the exploration of the renovations and expansion of the town hall, and uh, that will be an item on the agenda tomorrow evening. Uh, for the Board of Selectmen to consider. So I know some of you are aware as your staff in the building or, or um, Mr. Pitt has been made aware by, the, by mm -hmm. Mr. Mizikar, but wanted to make sure the full committee was aware of that. Thank you. <coughs> Hope you saved your plans. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a Assuming price. Assuming it goes forward. <laughs> we've got um, John and Donna were not 
part of the committee at that time, so they'll need to be brought up to speed as to what work has been done on that, right. assuming we move forward with that. <clears throat> Any other questions on that? No. Kim, yeah. Sure. If that does happen, how soon could we get, like, the copy of the plan? <coughs> could review it? Wednesday morning. Cool. <laughs> That will be contingent on the board's vote tomorrow, I guess. Because I have some ideas. <laughs> Do you know? No yeah. berm included. You're kidding. <laughs> Double berm. No fence, no berm. I'm stunned berm that you have thoughts on it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll cost, though. It'll cost. I'm sure it will. <laughs> Always does. Um, meeting schedule. We have April 11th, May 16th, June 13th. Any problems with that since we've last met? Yes. Okay. As, as the things start accelerating now, I, and I know the further you get along, the less problems you should run into. Are we going to need to meet more frequently? Is there any? Uh, I don't care if we, if we do. I just didn't. I don't think so. I know there's a lot of activity. There's not going to be a lot of things that are going to have to be decided. I mean, there'll be little stuff, but there's nothing big at this point, right? right. I, I don't, at this point, I wouldn't anticipate there to be a need for. Uh, if something does come up that we would need to, we would give you prop notice and coordinate that. That's going to ramp up a lot in the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. we probably, how many people will be on the site? In so the few weeks? we've been averaging, you know, 30, 30 right. plus now it, since we've started getting the concrete pours going. Um, and it'll maintain that and increase as we get. It won't be more than that. Probably 30 to 50 would be. Oh. It's only a, a 40,000 square yeah. foot building, so you can only fit so many people in a building before they start working on top get of it. And social other. distance. Yeah, right. Social yeah. distance. <laughs> I missed one question earlier, Ryan, and it's mm -hmm. for you. Um, the um, the renovations to the bathroom, to the yes. bathrooms, and and where are we on the budget with that? So the. Um, the last portion of the PCO uh, was submitted to Tecton and CMS for review. They provided comments on that. Um, right now I'm working with my, uh, some contractors and getting those comments incorporated into their PCO, you know, the back and forth as it normally goes. Mm -hmm. um, initially, you know, with our initial review of the previous two PCOs for the ground floor bathroom, MEP revisions, and the second floor, which was just the plumbing revisions for future use, mm -hmm. I believe we were at about just the twenty-five to $30,000 spent on that change thus far. The remaining PCO, which had all your architectural changes, it's somewhere in the range of 12 subcontractors with changes as parts of that scope is just over $100,000. I think it's 115 or something like that. So we're working to review that with the comments that CMS and Tecton provided to make sure that they're fair and just and that everything that is supposed to be included is included on it. I'd expect by the time we get done with those revisions, it'll probably be down near $100,000. So we look to be a little bit over that $100,000 budget that we had initially provided. Okay. Um, but just as noted, there's a lot of changes there, mm -hmm. a lot of expensive materials with that. But we're working diligently to move forward on that in pieces that are schedule sensitive that are included in this last change order. Um, we've had expedited reviews, and I've given notice to those subcontractors to proceed with that work once we've come to an agreement internally with it as it's something that needs to move forward with. Do you have a timeline on that? When would you expect? So I, I, I'm hoping to have all those comments incorporated by the end of this week so I can share that with CMS and Tecton so we have the final number for the next building committee. Okay, and we can include that in the weekly update? Sure. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Sorry about oh, that. Yeah, I got one question. Is sure. there anything right now except for weather that is holding this up, like materials or anything that you see? Nothing that's holding us up right now. It's really just getting the weather on our side and and really myself and Steve working efficiently with the trades to make sure as one person's finishing, we have the next person walking in the door. So it's just a coordination item on site. Like I said, we're, we're in a good situation with, you know, things like the rooftop units being ready to be installed right away. So I think we'll, now that we have the building getting closed, we have a lot of material already in hand and the subcontractors' warehouses to work efficiently. So at this point, I don't foresee any material issues. So who's responsible for the equipment in the dispatcher's room? <coughs> the desks themselves? The, the stations where the dispatchers work. 
So, we are. What? We are. The, we, the, is, that, is that part of the FF&E budget? It is. So it is. The, actual, the actual consoles are yes. part of the FF&E budget. Their responsibility or the contractor's responsibility is to bring power and data services to them. And then the equipment that's provided, computers, uh, screens, monitors, it's a combination of inside of the police budget as well as the communications um, package owes some of it as well. Okay, so I guess specifically so it's, so it's then, who, kind of a, who is responsible to make sure that stuff comes when it's supposed to? Me. You? Sure. It's, it's uh, not IT, uh, ordering stuff, our IT department? It, there's, there's going to be a lot of different hands in it altogether, but ultimately it's up to the three guys sitting at this table to make sure it's done on time. Okay. And I'll so, take the lead. And so. As far as you know, none of that stuff is an issue right now? No. Even with the problem with computer chips? I'm the, curious. The, like, uh, the equipment is, Pat, it's no different than uh, buying a computer at Best Buy and plugging it in and putting the software on it to run it. And it's not okay. It's not in the racks and the, uh, the the servers and stuff in the back room. We have um, we've been working with IT since December, December or yeah. November oh, yeah. even at the earliest um, to make sure that we had backup switches in place so that we could have network capability at the earliest possible time. So, so just, whether we have permanent switches or not, I can't say for sure. But we have a we have a plan B <coughs> that's in motion. So is, is um, I don't want to belabor it, but the equipment, we know what the specifications are that we want? Yes. So we know who a, who a potential vendor could be? Yes. So are we going to, when, are, when is that going to be ordered? Is that going to be ordered ahead of time so we store it someplace and we don't have a problem? Um, it's already in process. It's already, the order's already in? Well, for portions For of some it. of it, yes. Okay. Not all of it. But we... I'm sorry, but I just, <laughs> we, we're anticipating a longer lead time than what normally would be, right? Yes. Okay. I guess that was my point. <laughs> That's why we started in November with IT. Well, yeah. I, I, That's why we started in November with IT. Yeah, but when do we need it by? January. For the network switches? Um, August, I think August. So portion, right? yeah, portions of it, we're, we're just, we're using lessons learned from Fontaine's previous job in town to make sure that we don't have some of the similar hiccups that we experienced. I, I didn't, I honestly things. didn't know we did. I was just wondering. Yeah, so, like, no, well, that's. That, when, when should that stuff start getting installed according to the schedule? About. So, according, well, there's multiple steps to it. So, some of the network stuff is required for capabilities to start your HVAC and MEP systems. So we have switches in hand, the town IT has switches in hand that we can use for that. And those, the, the transition when we get the final switches in is all gonna be around substantial completion, but we have a path forward already set to make sure that we have what we need for the building construction wise so that everything oh, can- I mean for like the consoles and stuff like that, that equipment also. Is that, when does that need to be at the building? The consoles themselves? Probably not until October, November okay. of this year. But we'll take them in if we can get them earlier than that? Sure. Okay. I mean, that, that could be a problem if they don't show up. On <clears throat> Thanks. Anything else? I'm good. No? Anybody? Okay. Thank you, everybody. I just had, oh, sorry. Donna? Yeah. When will we see the <laughs> final bill for, like, furniture and all that? That's pending, right? So there's a number of different FF&E packages. The, the biggest one being furniture itself, all the building furniture. Um, we have final budget, almost final budget pricing coming from those vendors uh, later this week. Um, so we're hoping to have that on Friday. There'll be some pluses and minuses in there to select some finishes and things like that associated with them. But um, they're built into the schedule as well. and. Um, they're the our, our the two ven vendors that we're working with on furniture need a july release in order to, to deliver all of the furniture in time for the building um so it's they're, they're looking at a five week five month lead time on all furniture so we've we've got enough built in so we, sh we should be a hundred percent with that um in about a month so probably the next meeting we may hear um i should hope so 
Um, there's still some open items that need that need addressing. Um, there's a few selections that, that need to be finalized, but um, we, we should be able to have an update by then. Okay, thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Going once, twice? Mm -hmm. Just one thing. One thing. <laughs> Move, we adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Second. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Motion thanks. to adjourn? Aye. Good night. We did it. And second? We did it. We did it. We did it. Oh, we did. Okay. Well, we are adjourned then. Thank you. <laughs>